All right, Mr. Robert is back. Secured Entrepreneurs, happy Money Monday. It sure is Money Monday. It's also the very first day of the third quarter. So how is it that you are all on and popping out here? Comment below. Let's not play these games. This morning, we got into the Little Guide to Money Magic by Tess Whitehurst over there on the 3 a.m. Shenanigans Aurora Day channel. All right, so if you are into spiritual entrepreneurship and money magic that is now where we are gathering at the top of the morning okay also we had to do the secured entrepreneur women channel for the ladies who are 50 years young and above due to the emails that you all were sending and i want to thank you again for emailing please continue to do so at info at auroradayconsulting.com also, if you are a man who wants to support your secured entrepreneur women, you are welcome. Okay, we're brand spanking new. The other thing that Ms. Aurora wants to share quickly, for the month of June, we had 14 new secured entrepreneurs. Many of you know that I work with three attorneys and John keeps me the busiest, okay? So he brings a lot of you on board, all right? So we had 14 new secured entrepreneurs and two VIPs. And while we were down on this trip, just having a grand old time, we noticed that the Tropicana Hotel was being demolished. Yes, I think they were there for 67 years. Uh, somebody, some secured entrepreneur, who knows? Comment below, let Mr. Aurora know, 67 years. And now it is going to be a 33,000 seat baseball stadium. Arena, hello, okay? Strong business move. Nevada is saying, we want everybody. We want all the sports. We're coming up, okay? I'm not upset about it at all. In this video, we have to get into how it is you're going to avoid losing your trademark. I'm talking, you paid for this trademark. You went through an attorney, you did it, but you didn't really do all the research. Because remember, Mr. Rohrer has spoken with the secured entrepreneurs previously about the importance of having the trademark, okay? That trademark has to be done correctly. We're going to get into it because Simone sends me this video of a young lady who had a trademark on her product. Lo and behold, the trademark, she, she had, she had opposition with the trademark. Let me put it like that. And she ended up having to relinquish the trademark to the company who also had a trademark of their product that shared a similar name. I'm telling you, it is risky out here in these business streets, and Miss Aurora is consistently trying to help the entrepreneurs secure their ideas, secure their products and services. So I want to get into how it is you're going to avoid this. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is you're going to need to do moving forward if in fact you have a similar situation. All right, can we do it? Okay, so for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you build six and seven figure tax-free businesses. Come on, stick around. And you all know, this is the Secured Entrepreneur Movement. All right now, Secured Entrepreneurs, how many years has Ms. Aurora been on this platform letting entrepreneurs know that there's no reason to fool yourself into believing that something like this that we're about to get into could never happen to you. Many of you have said to Miss Aurora, I, I, I've never had that happen. I, I, don't, I don't foresee any of that, anything like that happening. <laughs> okay, I want you to pay very close attention to this young lady and what she's saying. She's first going to, you know, she's here on YouTube. So she made a 44 minute video. That's excellent. I believe it's excellent for any entrepreneur who believes that this cannot happen to them. Okay. So she first gets into how she's been on Amazon. She had to leave Amazon alone for the same reasons why Mr. Rory and many other people have to leave Amazon alone. Right. She, she's over there on Etsy. Then she decides she's going to concentrate on her website. She, she's, she's feeling her way. Okay. She's married. She has four children. All right. She's, she's getting this thing together. She does the right thing. She goes, she gets trademarks, U.S. trademarks. Pay attention to what she says in this clip I'm about to show you. She goes and gets patents, U.S. patents, okay? Listen to this clip. I went through a phase, you know, where I did have uh, other platforms copying my, my products. Like, um, I would find my stuff on Alibaba. 
Um, I would call my IP attorney to see if there was anything we could do to, um, you know, get my designs pulled down off of those platforms. And he just said, you know, you don't have any rights in those countries. So, you know, the, the thing is, keep your head down and just keep making new stuff. Just keep, keep the ball rolling, keep going because, you know, um, you just, you can't combat that. My products have been copied for years and, and I do have US patents and I do have US trademarks and I do have everything in place, LLCs and I do have attorneys and I have, you know, tried to do everything the right way. So it's really difficult when, you know, you just get people coming in and they just take your images and take all your work. That's a horrible feeling. So see, now you, you heard what she said and you heard what the responses were from these IP attorneys and things like this. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this clip here where she gets into how it is she created this product, okay? She was aware of the fact that she was utilizing a name that was popular in the 70s, didn't think anything about it. She used an attorney to create a trademark. All of these things took place with this, with this lovely woman. Listen to this. Because when my company first started, I used a name that was very close to a childhood uh, storybook. Although it wasn't um, currently active, this was something, movies that were made in the 70s, but I really liked the first name. And so I branded my company from that first name. My drawings of the characters of my company um, were liking to that character, but different. But um, when my son was about four years old, so now he's 17, uh, let's see, I don't even know how many, that was uh, 13 years ago, I got a cease and desist letter from the estate of this big conglomerate and um, they wanted me to turn in my trademarks because I did have my company name trademarked. Um, with a trademark patent attorney. So I'm surprised that, you know, there wasn't something when I set up everything that said, hey, you know, this company um, has a stop on the use of this first name. Like I said, it wasn't um, the, the character's full name, but it was the first name and that's what they wanted. And so um, I, you know, had built my business around this name, my company name, and when I got that letter, I had to answer back. So I had to hire an attorney to fight for the name and to fight for my trademarks. They wanted all of my um, cells. They wanted my bank statements, um, everything. I mean, they were coming after me and I was gonna have to fly to New York to go to court to um, plead my case. But the first thing I had to do was to hire an attorney. And, um, I just, you know, I just couldn't understand it. I guess prior to this, um, I was on a very large television show um, and I won The Big Idea. The show was called The Big Idea and I was a guest on the show as a contestant and I had created um, this bottle cap and the bottle cap won the big idea. One of the judges was Sam Adams from Sam Adams Beer and he thought it was innovative. But the name of my company, I think, you know, is what got national attention. And so I got a cease and desist from um, this larger conglomerate that was from Switzerland and they came after me, um, wanting everything that had the name on it. So, um, you just have to be careful and I lost everything I had built. My company at that point was probably about four years old um, and to have to turn in everything was just, it was heartbreaking. And I thought, I'm ruined. I, I How am I gonna come back from this? Um, but lo and behold, you know, God has a larger plan and um, after I kind of dusted myself off because I decided not to fight. Um, my son was four. 
he needed to have spine surgery. He was born with um, a congenital um, defect on his spine. And so we had to wait until he was four years old. So he was due to have spine surgery that summer. And I just decided I'm not gonna fight. I'm just going to give them everything that they're asking for. And so I had to turn it all in. And um, luckily we were able to settle to where they took my website. They took my US, um, they took my trademarks. They took everything. I can't, that's why I'm not even saying the name right now. Um, and basically the case was closed. Um, and you know, but I learned from that. And although I was young in this business, um, it taught me that you don't, you don't play. Even though this character was somebody from the 70s and I wasn't using the full name, they wanted that and they said it caused confusion in the marketplace because my drawings of my current characters using that first name look very similar to the iconic characters from the 70s. Um, and so if you have, you know, if you're out there doing stuff, don't do it because people think, oh, they're not gonna come after me. Nobody's gonna come and get me. That is not true. I was at home with four kids and working at home in the other room, just making products out of a bedroom. And I got a infringement letter, a cease and desist, had to hire an attorney, had to pay thousands of dollars just to try to like save a business that wasn't even profitable, but to save myself, I mean, it could have affected my husband, his company. I mean, these things can run really deep. All right, now you heard it. You heard it. Okay, she even gave her advice as it relates to, hey, don't even do it, okay? Because you don't know what's around the corner, all right? Now, you heard, she was aware of this particular name. The name was popular in the 70s. And what did she get? A letter from the estate of the creator of this character, okay? Does it matter that you didn't use the full name? That name was there. So my question, my first question, okay, would be, you mean to tell me you went to an attorney who didn't even bring up the fact that, hey, look, this name is popular. And guess what? Uh, you are wanting to do a U.S. trademark. That might not go over too well. You might want to do this instead if you plan on using the name. Okay. And what did they tell her in the letter? You're creating confusion in the marketplace. Doesn't matter that this is a character from the 70s. I don't know what the character is. I don't. So I can't say, you know, uh, if I, if I've seen anything from, from that particular character, the show, whatever it was. Okay. But clearly it was creating confusion in the marketplace. And what happened? She had to give over all her sales. How much money did you make off of this name? Because you, you only used it because it was out here. Like, come on now, let's, let's get real about this. And what did she say? She lost everything and she had to give it up because she had a child who needed health care, who had an emergency health care issue. Okay. This thing is very real. So please. So what did she say? Don't even do it. Why? Because the name was obviously something that was popular. And your first mind should have been, uh, I'm not going there. I'm not, I am not getting into that. That's not, that's not what I'm doing, but it didn't, it didn't happen that way because she felt like her character was different. So Mrs. Aurora is going to give you the solution to this. This young lady already told you one, don't, don't go there with yourself using, using something that's already out there. Okay. What, what you didn't hear in the clip is her saying basically, the research, because where was, where was the research? Okay. So we know that we have to do that, right? The solution, anytime you are doing these trademarks and, and Mr. Roar told you in another video about these names, uh, I, I need to, I don't know. I, I need to put the, I need to put the uh, link to that video here in the description box or something, because Mr. Roar already told you about using specific names when you even create your legal entities, okay? Mr. Rora tells all of the secured entrepreneurs all about this time and time again, right? So when it is that you know you're going to be selling this product that you created, these characters that you create internationally, you must 
apply for an international trademark. Yes, an international. Now, I, I believe that a lot of people don't do it because of the expense. You would probably spend anywhere between $3,000 and $5,000 to do this uh, international trademark, okay? But you're going to go to the World Intellectual Property Organization. You're going to go there. The World Inter Intellectual Property Organization to file for an international trademark on your creations, okay? Now, the issue that was really going on with this young lady is that what, what do we know about trademarks? A first in line, first in time. First in time, first in line. Okay. I'm out here using it first. I have the trademark here first. Okay. It doesn't stop anybody from using the very same name and getting a trademark on it in another country because the trademark is geographical. That's why either you're going to, if you know you're selling this product in Germany, you're selling this product in Spain and you don't want to spend the amount of money that you may have to spend to do the international trademark, you have to trademark in those countries. Okay. Trademark is geographical. Right. So what did the estate of this character you, that she used, what did they say to her that we were here first? This name was in existence through us first. And because of that, we're going to confiscate your sales. We're going to confiscate your trademark, your U.S. trademark. Hello. Please secure it entrepreneurs. If you haven't paid attention to anything Mr. Rora has said up here for what, seven years now? <laughs> All right. Please. There's been a few times I've, I've showed you all other ladies here on YouTube who have suffered this issue, having their things stolen. Okay. Now, when, when the young lady said that, you know, her things were up there and Oh, you don't have any recourse. Why didn't you have any recourse? Because your trademark was only good for the United States. So these people clearly, and I hope that's, I hope that's what the case was here, who were doing that to her were not in the United States. That's probably why her attorneys told her that uh, she, she, she didn't have recourse for that. So. The moral of today's story, boys and girls, okay, is that when it is you are putting your intellectual property out here for the world, please be mindful of where it is you are going to sell your products and services, where it is these things are going to show up, okay? These are the things you need to plan beforehand. Just don't go putting stuff out here on the internet willy nilly, because again, here's the other glitch to this. The first in time and the first in line is still, still holds a lot of weight in the sense that you can stop somebody from using something that you created that you don't have a trademark on yet. If you can prove that you were the first to do it, you were the first, you were the first person who put it out there. They, the records are there. Okay. You can get the other party to quit the crap, quit the crap. Okay. The only thing is you will not get monetary damages for it. You won't get any monetary damages, but you will uh, be able to get them to stop doing what it is that they're doing. Now, in this case, uh, these people were, were able to get monetary damages. Why? Because they have had that trademark. They're in Switzerland since the seventies. OK, and I find it interesting that she did not say they also had a trademark in the United States. She didn't say that. She said they were in Switzerland. Her her trademark was here in the United States and she could have fought it. And if she had the means to fight it, she may have caught a win. Why? Because she said she only used the, 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 the beginning of the name, the first name. She said she said that. Right. OK, she said it. 
and she had a trademark on it. Okay. But they were able to come against her and make the claim. She did not fight the claim. Who's to say that if she fought the claim, she would not have caught a win. Mm, you see secured entrepreneurs, we've got to be prepared at every side. Okay. All right. That's what Miss Aurora wants to share in this video. All right. Please, please do the research on what it is that you're, you're creating, the names that you're using, all of these things. And when it comes to these trademarks, international trademarking is going to be key for many of you with the things that you're putting out here to sell internationally. What does Miss Aurora always say? Protecting your business starts before you open for business. I need to start chanting that again because this is a primary example of what can actually happen to you. Hello. All right. You all know you can find me, Miss Aurora Day, at auroradayconsulting.com. And until next time, ta-ta.